Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 148 of the Spears Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, as always. And, uh, oh, man, I'm going to talk to you about it later. For now, I had one of the most confusing experiences at a, at a fucking health shop. Is that what you call them? Health shops or proteins? I don't know. Wherever the fuck you get these health things, right? The, all those all those buckets of powder that have buzzwords on them like, oh, monohydrate and creatine. and But in reality, it's probably just going to give you cancer in 60 years and we don't know that yet. But on the plus side, it is helping me put on a bit of weight. So I'm really trying to, I'm really trying to bulk up my neck, guys. I'm trying to, I'm trying to become strong neck. That's me. So went to this fucking supplement store, right? I wanted to get this uh, mass gaining protein shake. Ooh, why don't you just eat more food instead? Hey, because that's expensive and I, I, I actively dislike eating. Don't like it. Not fun. I don't like eating. I like food. Food's nice. I don't like, I don't like actually eating though. You know what I mean? I know you don't because you're a human being that likes to eat food to survive, but I'm not. I'm a human being who only enjoys eating if it's in the virgin lounge. <laughs> um, yeah, so I go to this supplement store, right? I'm trying to get fucking protein shit. And I get the thing that I want, and then I, I take it to the guy at the counter, and uh, this interaction of him serving me only went for about a minute. Maybe, maybe a minute... 40 seconds to a minute, minute max, probably more like 40, 50 seconds. But that guy called me bro six times I counted. <laughs> six times in 40 seconds. Called me bro that many fucking times. I've never been called bro that many times in my life. I think I'm related to that guy. And he was trying to drop hints. Right? So I got my tub of shit and uh, I'm like, one cancer, please. And he goes, no worries, bro. Did you find everything you wanted? And I was like, yeah, man, see one, bro, totally fine. I said, nah, I'm all good, that's it, thanks. And he goes, no worries, bro. And I was like, oh, hang on a second, he's called me, he's called me bro twice in about five seconds, that's a bit strange. Uh, anyway, he scans me up, he goes, do you have a, uh, have a loyalty card, bro? And I'm like, uh, yes. He goes, oh, sweet, what's your phone number? I'm like, oh, fuck, now I have to try and remember the fake phone number I gave them because I never give them a real one. I'm like, oh, I probably should just be up under Lewis... Spears, he goes, no worries, bro, I'll just set you up by name. I'm like, well, this is a fucking four times. And he finds me, he goes, oh, I found you, bro. I'm like, what the fuck? This is like number five. And then he goes, all right, so sweet. So that'll be however much money. And I give him, I'm like, oh, just on card. He's like, no worries, bro, all good. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? This guy's calling me bro like, <laughs> this guy's calling me bro like six times. It's only been 30 seconds. We're up to bro six. And then I, I pay him and he, um, he takes it, he goes, all right, that's all sweet. Did you want a receipt, bro? I'm like, oh, no, no, thanks, bro. And he goes, all right, no worries. Have a good day, bro. <laughs> he called me bro like six or six or eight times. Find everything you want, bro. Do you have a membership card, bro? No worries, bro. I'll look you up. All right, sweet. That'll be $80, bro. Do you need a receipt, bro? All right, thanks. Have a good day, bro. I was like, fucking hell. I've never been called bro that many times in my fucking life. Of course it happens at the supplement store. I don't want to know how that guy talks to his actual brother. <laughs> I like, man, imagine him in bed, you know? You like that, bro? Yeah, you like, you like it when I pound you like that, bro? Yeah, bro. I know you like that, bro. And then, but he also gets off on being called bro, and he's like, "Call me bro." And then uh, his girlfriend is like, "Why do you have to call me bro? I'm a girl." Shut up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, take it. Or maybe he's like a religious guy. Dear Lord, how's it going, bro? <laughs> Dear Lord, sup, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you for all the gains and all the bitches and all and especially all of my bros. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Amen. Do you need a receipt, bro? Huh? <laughs> For that prayer? Call me, bro, eight times. In 40 seconds. That's going to be a record. Yeah, you like that, bro? <laughs> okay. Um, oh, before I forget, the uh, missing episode of the podcast is uh, on Patreon now. Uh, it's a podcast that will never be uploaded anywhere else. It's only on Patreon. It's me. Jazz was there as well, actually, for, the, for I think the whole thing, even. I think it was me and Jazz the whole time. So it's a, it's a really good one. And uh, I, I'm not putting it anywhere else because I said some actually literally illegal things that you can't say. And I couldn't be bothered editing them. So I'm like, ah, fuck it. I'll break the law for Patreons. <laughs> so if you want to uh, see some shit that... Uh, if you're Australian, you actually... If you're Australian, there's a good chance that you would never have heard that uh, before. Because it's illegal to say because we don't have our freedom of speech. So that's lovely, isn't it? Um, but that'll be on, that's on Patreon right now. If you want to listen and watch, if you want an extra podcast this month, you can go for it. Um, also, fuck man, I put up, speaking of Patreon, dude, I put up that, uh, you know, that, oh, a couple podcasts ago, I talked about that, that chick squirting on an escalator. I ended up uploading the uncensored version. I had to, and it was such a fuck around. I don't know why I promised to give, it's still up there. I don't know why I promised to give it to you guys because it was such a bitch because I've never uploaded, I, I mean, it was porn. <laughs> <laughs> I've never uploaded porn before, so I'm like, how the fuck do I do this? So I looked up all these different websites, and I ended up finding a Vimeo. Vimeo can, has nudity, so I'm like, alright, I'll put it on Vimeo. And um, then I had to like change the file format, because if it's over a certain size, you had to pay Vimeo money. And I was like, look, I'm not paying Vimeo money, just so I can show you some bitch squirting on an escalator, alright? It's not, not that important to me. So I changed all the file sizes. Uh, I made it work, and you can see the whole uncensored video of her going ah on a <laughs> on an escalator, squirting. Well, it's disgusting. Don't watch it, especially uh, only if you're over eighteen. Actually, I must say, because it's it's literally porn. Okay, so don't. But anyway, if you want to see that video, it's on Patreon. But the fucking thing is so annoying because I tagged the thing with "not safe for work" and eighteen plus, obviously, because it's a pornography, right? I get an email. I, I, I put uploaded. I spent like an hour trying to work out where I can put this shit. Put it on Vimeo. Change the file format. Chuck it on Patreon. And then I, f <laughs> and then I don't know why I didn't see this shit coming. It's so stupid. Of course this would happen. Thirty seconds after I posted on Patreon, Patreon emails me. And I'm like, oh great, there goes my rent. There goes my rent. I'm gonna get evicted because I can't afford anything. But then I, uh, I get this email, and uh, it's from Patreon. It's an automatic email, and it says, We noticed that you tagged something with 18+, plus and not safe for work. As a precaution, we have changed your entire Patreon account to 18+, plus only. <laughs> and fuck! Now you can't even look at my Patreon without saying that you're over 18, and it looks like I'm one of those fucking Instagram whores posting photos of their tits. I mean, when you think about it, I'm worse than all of those thoughts because I'm I'm just I'm posting square on my Patreon. Is this is this really how I'm going to pay the rent? Is this how I've how I've done it? So, uh, if you want to watch that, it's on Patreon. But now, what's what's a really cool feature of my Patreon account is you have to be 18 plus to support me. Fucking that sucks, bro. <laughs> bro, that sucks, bro. Bro! Ladies and gentlemen, bros and bro! Man, I don't know. So, so th thank you if you support me on Patreon, but also fuck you because you made my job harder and, and now it's 18 plus, which is sick. Uh, so, but if you want to watch the extra episode of the podcast plus that fucking filthy fucking uncensored video, you can see it on my Patreon if you're over 18. Fuck, man. What did I do this week? I haven't done too much shit. I've been uh, working on videos, man. Um, but I'm not going to talk about that because that's boring. Oh, I found out. Update about the Virgin Lounge. Um, Guys, I'm so depressed. I thought I was a higher being. I thought I was better than everybody else because I was in 
the Virgin Lounge. The minute after I finished recording that podcast where I found that I was better than everyone, I went around throwing shoes at the homeless. You know, like expensive shoes as well. But just but just to make sure that they didn't pick the shoes up and then use them, I was I was I would throw them in pairs, but there would be there would be both left feet uh, shoes and they'd be different sizes. So I'd throw so what I'd do is I'd go down to Gucci and I'd buy ten different pairs of thousand dollar shoes because, you know, I'm in the Virgin Lounge, you just get free money if you get access to there, so I could afford it, right? So I bought ten pairs of thousand dollar shoes and what I did was I made sure I bought uh, five pairs of uh, size sevens and five pairs of size thirteens. And what I did is I uh, arranged them all so that I had two left shoes uh, in the pairs. So one left shoe size seven, one left shoe size thirteen. And what I did was I drove around, and every time I saw a homeless person, I chuck a size seven left foot, and I go, "I'm in the Virgin Lounge, and you're not." <clears throat> hit him in the head, right? And then he'd be like, he, he would mishear me and be like, oh, dude, this guy's giving out free shoes to the homeless. That's great. And then he'd pick it up and then I'd throw like a left size 13. Wham! Piff that at him too. And then he'd be like, oh, thank you, mister. And then we'd hold up the shoes and he'd be like, oh, these are two different sizes. And i go, yeah, and they're both left foot. Good luck, dickhead. And then I just drove away. Because I'm in the Virgin Lounge, you can just do that. The police pulled me over and they were like, uh, that's illegal, sir. And then I showed them that I was in the Virgin Lounge last week. And they were like, oh, excuse me, my, my apologies, bro. Drive on, bro. <laughs> um, but I found out uh, just yesterday, man, I'm, I'm heartbroken. I was, ne- I was not supposed to be let into the Virgin Lounge. So what happened, right? I got there at at almost midnight I was tired as fuck and I thought that all you needed to get into the Virgin Lounge was a Virgin ticket right so I rock up to the desk and I g- gave it to the lady and she was obviously tired as fuck because it's almost midnight and uh, I just gave her the thing and I remember her asking me something like oh do you have a loyalty card or a membership and I just said oh no not at the moment um, and then I, and then sh- and then I just walked in I just ignored her I just she was like oh okay and I just I just left <laughs> she's like do you have this and I was like nah and I walked in and and she didn't say anything so I'm like oh okay obviously all you need is a ticket I found out she was asking me if I had a Virgin Airlines membership or something you can't get into the lounge unless you have a frequent flyers Virgin membership I don't even know what it is but the ticket is not enough you need the membership too so she asked me if I had a membership and I pretty much went hey fuck you and I walked in the lounge and she just must be used to that you know, because so many, so many fucking alpha, pure being specimens that go into the Virgin Lounge just treat her like shit. Because obviously, you know, she's a peasant. She works at the Virgin Lounge. She's not allowed in the Virgin Lounge. There's a big difference, right? She's a peasant. So she just must, must, must get treated like, like a peasant by all the kings and queens that go to the Virgin Lounge. And she thought that I was of pure blue blood. Or should I say purple blood? Because I think that's what <laughs> Virgin's colour is. Um, but... She shouldn't have let me in because I didn't have a membership. So now, I, I was, now I'm fucking heartbroken. Now I'm like, well, even if I buy a Virgin ticket, I can't get into the lounge. I have to get a fucking membership. So uh, you better believe I'm getting on that membership stuff. I don't know how much it costs. Maybe it's too expensive. But you better believe I'm asking the people booking my tour, hey, I need that membership ASAP. Give me that shit. I want that free risotto again. I need to, I need to throw shoes at the homeless. Because I tell you, if the police find out that I was never supposed to be in that lounge, I'm going to get arrested for that shit because throwing two different size left shoes at the homeless, I'm pretty sure it's not specifically illegal, but I'm sure they could find a way to get me in trouble. Hey, that's not how you donate shoes to the homeless. You're just throwing them at the homeless to confuse them and give them false hope about getting free $1,000 shoes, but in reality, they've got a size 7 and a size 13, both, both on the left foot. That doesn't make sense. Oh, and also just to make sure that they did that, all the all the homeless communities didn't like the left hand shoes in Melbourne and all the right ha- all the right foot shoes in Perth. Did you hear me say left hand shoes? I'm stupid, bro. I don't deserve to be in the Virgin Lounge, bro. I deserve to be in that fucking supplement store saying "bro" eighty times. You like that, bro, dear bro? <laughs> Um, 
so yeah, man, I've, I'm I'm a fucking I'm a fake. Speaking of airline stuff, did you hear about? I'm just getting this news article about. I, okay, I'm just gonna read you the headline. Okay, this is so alpha. This is the most alpha shit I've ever heard. Okay, if you think fucking your friend's dad, I mean fucking your friend's mum is alpha. <laughs> oh, you don't know what alpha is, okay? This is fucking alpha. Let me just read this headline. Obese American passenger forces Taiwanese flight attendant to wipe his ass on plane. <laughs> <laughs> That's so alpha. So alpha, dude. And then the sub-headline makes... You know, okay, is there a level above alpha? Is there a level above alpha? There must be. Because if there isn't, this guy is. Uh, okay. Is... Is... this bunch of math shit. Is there... Uh, is there a, a more alpha male... Okay, well, I don't think this exists. So, this guy has just become it. Like, is there an alpha alpha male? Okay. Alright, this is an A plus alpha male move, okay? So, not only, right? Okay, so, let me... Here's, here's a regular alpha. Obese American passenger forces Taiwanese flight attendant to wipe his ass on plane. All right? Regular alpha. This is what took him to the A-plus alpha level. As she wiped, the passenger allegedly moaned in pleasure and urged her on saying deeper, deeper. <laughs> I, I shouldn't laugh. That's so fucked, man. The poor woman. See... You know how I was saying that I would book a flight just so I could get into the Virgin Airlines? You know there is no way this guy was going anywhere important. Like, him getting the flight attendant to wipe his ass on the plane, that was the reason he took the flight. He wasn't like, oh, I've got a, uh, I've got a business trip. I've got an important business trip with all of my shareholders for a new uh, blue chip company that has just started and is just picking up. And I need to, I need to uh, discuss uh, uh, trans-Pacific partnerships with other Taiwanese businesses. No, okay. He didn't do that. He didn't go to. He didn't fly on business and then be like, oh, while I'm on the train, while I'm on the plane, might as well get someone else to wipe my ass for me. No, you know he's been like, you know it would be really good, a Taiwanese air hostess wiping my ass, my shitty asshole on the plane. Like, that's why he was there, fucking creep. And there's a photo of the guy, and, and <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't come up with a more generic looking sex offender. Like, he looks exactly like he should. This is why when some people are like, oh, stop coming up with stereotypes. It's like, have you seen this sex offender on a plane? Because he looks like every sex offender you've ever seen. The dude's balding. He's got really long hair, giant gray beard. He's obese as fuck and he's wearing cargo shorts and sandals. If you're wearing cargo shorts and sandals, you're a rapist. That's the uniform. There's... there's <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why Steve Irwin wore boots. Because if he chucked sandals on in that cargo shorts outfit, he would have just started fucking crocodiles instead of wrestling with them. Maybe that's why the Stingway, Stingray had a dig at him. You know, he wasn't wearing the boots. He was like, oh, fuck, is that a rapist? <laughs> this, is, this story is so fucking crazy. What a piece of shit this guy is. A crew of female flight attendants in Taiwan say they were left physically and mentally traumatized after reluctantly complying with the unreasonable demands of an obese foreign passenger. Uh, okay. Unreasonable? That, it's a little bit worse than... Unreasonable is like me going to a restaurant and sending the food back twice. You know? For like a small reason. Oh, this doesn't have enough salt. Take it back to the chef. And then it comes back and I have another bite. And I go, oh, 
this still has not enough salt. Send it back. That's unreasonable, okay? This dude forced a woman to put her fingers in his ass on a plane. Little bit beyond unreasonable, man. Can we say sexual assault? Um... The male passenger, described as being an American weighing around 200 kilos. You know what's fucked about... When I hear a person weighing 200 kilos, I no longer think that's that fat. You know? Like, when I... I I don't really be shocked at weight until I hear 300 kilos, 500 pounds. You know what I mean? Like, that's how fucked the world's gotten that when I see 200 kilos, I go, Oh, yeah, it's not that bad. In 1920, 200 kilos would be a world record. I, I bet it is. You, that's freak show level. But 200 kilos, you can just get on a plane and, and the... And <laughs> if you weigh 200 kilos, the only way people can think you're weird is by forcing Taiwanese women to wipe your ass in front of everyone else. That's the only way you can stand out because otherwise you're just another fat cunt. Um... He boarded the plane on a wheelchair and asked to be placed on a row with three free seats. Later, he made a more unusual request. Okay, this is not an unusual... Oh, oh this, this man asked forced women to wipe his ass on the plane. He's pretty unique, isn't he? What a quirky guy. What an unusual trait to have. Jesus, this article sucks. Um... Uh, he made a more unusual requ- unusual request, asking for help in the bathroom, explaining that he recently had surgery on his hand. Hey, dude, how many hands do you have? Is it two? <laughs> the flight attendant tried to use a blanket to cover the man's exposed... I That's crazy that, like, they complied with it. Because if... <laughs> I mean, if that was me, I'd be like, oh, dude, that sucks about your hand. Um, I guess you're going to have a shitty asshole for a little bit. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not helping. Because it's not like... It's, it's not like he's fallen and he needs help getting up. It's, it's like... I mean, you should wipe your ass, but you don't have to. It's not, it's not like you're going to die if you don't. This this would have to be an Emirates flight because the uh, the level of customer service, of course, sir, I can wipe your ass for you, is next level. I hope, do they do that in the Virgin Lounge? That must be the Emirates Lounge. They wipe your ass and they suck your dick for free. Sometimes at the same time, if there's enough staff available. <clears throat> flight attendant used a blanket to cover the man's exposed genitals, but that was slapped away. Okay, dude, if... <laughs> She then put on a pair of surgical gloves and pulled down his underwear. Oh, so they're helping him use the bathroom. Oh, okay. I guess that's kind of kind of reasonable. So, like, yeah, I guess you would help a disabled dude or someone you thought was disabled to get to the point where he can poo, but you wouldn't help with the with the cleanup, would you? Um, the man also insisted that the door be kept open, claiming that he wouldn't be able to breathe otherwise. Jesus Christ, could you imagine if you were on this flight, like, as a, as a bystander, just watching this shit happen? Uh, excuse me, sir, you need, ah, I need it, I need a shit with the door open, otherwise I can't breathe. Um, soon the man made his most unreasonable demand yet, calling on the flight attendant to come inside and wipe his ass for him. Once again, they initially refused, but the man threatened to stay in the bathroom for the entire flight. Sure, bro. Go for it. I'll lock the door. Stay in there, man. Enjoy it. This is crazy. Feeling as if she had no choice, poor woman. The flight attendant put on three layers of surgical gloves. (laughs) Three layers. I love that. And started wiping. As she did so, the man allegedly began moaning in pleasure and saying deeper, deeper. Oh, fuck. He then claimed she hadn't done a good enough job and made her wipe three more times before he was happy. (laughs) Oh, fuck. This is so horrible. The poor woman. 
I can't even joke about this anymore. That's just fucked. Poor bitch. I hope she gets a lot of money from this fucking flight thing. She, she's... Yeah, she's going to make so much money because this photo of her is like... It's a press conference and it looks like 60 microphones. Every single time there's a controversy, the more microphones in front of the woman crying, the more money she's going to get paid in the settlement. I hope she fucking balls out and that guy goes to prison. What a fucking creeper. <clears throat> That's fucked. Um, I, was on the, I was on the tram the other day. I was going to a gig, uh, working on some new gear for the, for the new hour. Um, and <laughs> I was on the tram, right? And, there, and it, w it wasn't really a busy tram. There was maybe eight people on the tram. And um, it was quite a busy street that we were going down. And... Nothing was happening. I was just reading my book. And then all of a sudden, like, you just, these bangs, like explosions right next to the tram start happening. Like, bang, 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 bang. Like, really, really rapid. It sounded like a fucking machine gun. Literally. Like, it sounded like a machine gun. And I freaked out. And then I looked out the window and all I see are, like, explosions shooting at the fucking tram. It looks like gunshots. Two guys behind me, my age, jumped on the floor because we were getting fucking shot at in the tram by someone with a machine gun. I don't know how they got it into Australia, right? But everyone just went into panic mode, jumped down on the fucking floor. I freaked out. I ducked. And then it took everyone about 10 seconds to realize that there were fireworks that someone had accidentally let off in the street in the middle of the day. It was so scary. Because they're, they're fireworks, right? And they were like those small cracker things and they were shooting in one direction at the tram. So it looked like someone was just fucking unloading an AK-47 at the fucking tram. These two, these poor two guys jumped down, literally belly down on the floor of the fucking tram. And then everyone worked out that it was fireworks and we all, and, and we all kind of slowly realized that, that, oh yeah, we don't live in America. That doesn't happen here. And it probably never will. Because one guy did it, never, and then the government was like, "All right, you've blown it. No guns, or no machine guns. That's it. You're, you're banned." And everyone was like, "Oh, sweet. I guess we kind of didn't need them anyway." Um, dude, but it was fucking scary, man. I couldn't imagine <clears throat> if I'm like, imagine if that happened in America, where the th the threat of being shot on a tram is kind of real. You know, that, like, that's a thing that could happen on the way to work. What happened on the way to work, Jim? Oh, fucking six cunts got shot in the head on the train. Oh, fuck. Any survivors? Yeah, but there's no public health care, so they're all going to die. <laughs> oh, well, land of the free. That being said, I desperately want to live in America. As much shit as I talk about America, I want to be there. <clears throat> that's where I want to be, man. Uh, but I'll move to LA, one of the pussy states, and just never, hopefully never be shot. But who knows, man? It could happen. But yeah, it was fucking, it was fucking scary, dude. Um, I've run out of things to say, guys. I've run out of shit. I haven't really done too much today. Um, oh, I wanted to, to say, what did I want to say? There's some, oh, that's right. I was in um I was in the city the other day and uh I needed to buy a duffel bag and uh <laughs> I I have it now and I've no I've, I've realized that um there's like you you feel the minute you have the duffel bag in your hand you feel so productive no matter what's in the bag you're just walking around with a duffel bag in your hand and it's like it's you feel like you're in every fucking bank robbery movie you know, that walking shot where they're on a fucking mission and they got like a, a bomb or a gun or, or whatever in the bag. Or you feel like a businessman with a bunch of files in there. Even like today, for example, I, I went to gym and I'm, I'm using it for gym clothes and a towel and shit because my gym has a shower. Um, and <clears throat> I, I went to gym and then uh, left gym and started coming to the warehouse 
And uh, I just felt so productive with my fucking duffel bag, even though I had already used it for its purpose and it was just dead weight. I was just walking down the street with my duffel being like, yeah, I'm on a fucking mission, cunt. I got a duffel bag. I reckon I could fill the duffel bag with dildos and still feel like a businessman walking down the street with it. I don't know what it is about duffel bags. And I've also noticed that duffels, they say a lot about a person, you know? Like, I've just noticed other... Now that I have one, I've started noticing other people's ones, right? If you're a girl, you can only have a grey duffel bag. If you're a woman and your duffel bag is anything other than grey, have a look in in your skirt because you may have a penis. Because I don't think I've ever seen a woman that that has a duffel bag that's not grey. You know, it's like, it's grey and, and maybe the only spot of colour will be like a brown country road logo. And that's it. You'd never see a girl with like a red duffel bag or a black one or a, or a fucking brown one even. It's only grey. If you're a woman, only grey duffel bag. If you have another colour, you have a penis. Men, we have a lot. We have a lot more variety. It's one of the only things that there's a lot of variety. So you might see a lot on Instagram, all the fucking Louis Vuitton ones. They're very nice. I like those. I did not get them. The brown... If Okay, if, your duffel bag, if you're a dude and your, and your duffel bag's brown, businessman. Absolutely. You're a businessman. However, if your duffel bag's grey, you're going to the gym. And I've noticed... The color that I have, a black duffel bag, right? I've got it here. If you have a black duffel bag, you're about to shoot up a school. And that's the only reason why you would have one is if you're a school shooter. I don't know why I got a black one. I look like a terrorist. For sure, man. Like this only has shoes and a towel and shorts in it and a t-shirt. But because of the color, it looks like there's also C4 in there. (laughs) <laughs> and just and a couple rifles and a, and a few handguns and enough ammunition to take out a preschool. But the only thing in there is like a towel and my Kindle with science fiction books on it. <laughs> I got it from um. I I just wanted the the bag for gym right, so I'm like, oh, just to get the cheapest thing possible. And I'm like, where's where do you get cheap bags from? I'm like, oh. Cotton On, the home of child labor. So I went to Cotton On and I walked in and, oh man, the fuck, every mannequin just looked like Luke. I was like, oh, Luke would wear that, Luke would wear that, Luke would, oh, I've literally seen Luke in three of these t-shirts. That's all he buys is fucking Cotton On clothes. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I walked in there and I'm like, I hate this so much shitty fucking cheap quality stuff that'll fall apart in three days and like and they had like 60 versions of that awful festival t-shirt and i saw it on the rack and i was like oh i might look good in that fuck i can't get it no (laughs) no i can't buy that shit that's the problem because that festival shirt is actually very cool but every single cunt on the planet has it so i can't buy it Not that I would wear it anyway. It's not black. The only thing I wear is... I'm actually wearing grey today. I surprised myself. Grey t-shirt, blue jeans. Who am I? I'm going to some fucking wanky podcast meeting, so I'm trying not to look like I'm there to explode. (laughs) I'm trying to look approachable so I can network. Dude, I I look like such a school shooter. The amount of times I get on stage... And because I'm so tall and I'm dressed in all black, the amount of time, and the way I do my hair as well, the amount of times I've gotten on stage at, at like a place where the, it's not my show, so there's no fans there, and, and I've gotten on stage and I've, I've started telling jokes and I'm getting laughs, but I can see in people's faces, I can see them thinking, oh, this is pretty good for the moment, but I, I, I see his hairstyle and I see his outfit. This is good for now, but I know it's going to take a racist turn. Like, I see people thinking that, like, ah, oh, this is good, but I'm, I'm not going to laugh too much because I'm pretty sure he's about to start ranting about Jewish people controlling the media any minute now. And I'm, I never do! I'm just there to tell jokes about fucking going on cruises and, and the occasional joke about a national tragedy, you know? Harmless. Anyway, so I'm in Cotton On, and, uh... I'm looking for bags. I find this bag 
and I'm um, like, sweet. And then this guy, the guy who works there comes up to me and he goes, hey, dude, I love your stuff. And I was like, oh, thank you, man. And he goes, you're so sick. Are you here to get something? And I was like, yeah, man. And he goes, right. Well, I have a staff discount I can use once a month. Today, I'm giving it to you. Anything you want in the store, 50% off. You can get anything you want for half price. And I was like, man, that's so cool. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And then he walked away and I thought, I don't fucking want anything. You ever get, you ever get given a gift card for a store you would never shop in? One time for when, when I was uh, 15, my auntie bought me the first book in the Twilight series. And I think uh, the only time I've ever been more disappointed in a nice gesture was when that guy gave me 50% off anything I wanted in the Cotton On store. Because I looked around. I, at first, I was excited. And if you're listening, bro, thank you. You're a legend. But I don't want anything from your fucking store other than a duffel bag. So I'm looking around and I'm like, I don't, I, like, I was literally like, oh, okay, well, I was only going to spend 40 bucks. So the bag's now 20. I guess I could get some t-shirts or something because they'd be $10 for me. And I'm looking around and I'm just like, I don't fucking want any of this shit, even if it was free. So you know what I did? I, of course, texted Luke, <laughs> and I was like, hey, man, I've got half off anything you want in the Cotton On store, and uh, he didn't text me back, so he missed out. I just bought the duffel bag and left, but then he texts me about 10 minutes later after I'd left the store, and he goes, oh, bro, you got to get me this and this, and I was like, you missed out, and also, of course, you knew exactly what you wanted. Um, so, hey, seriously, um, thank you for the, for the 50% off thing, man. I appreciate it. I made my bag cheaper, but, uh, it was, it was funny that when I got there with just the bag as well, because he initially came up to me, he's like, what are you looking for, man? I was like, oh, just a bag. And he goes, and then he gave me, and, and you can have 50% off whatever you want, bro. And I was like, oh, thanks. And then he was so disappointed when I came back with only the bag. Like, I just wasted, I full-on wasted his, his once-a-month discount because I was totally prepared to pay full price and still leave going. That was cheap as. 40 bucks for a duffel bag. Pretty good. So, sorry, man. Uh, Luke goes there three times a week. Give it to him. <laughs> um, okay. Let's, what's the time? All right, let's do miscellaneous bit at the end, shall we? If you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. It's the part where I answer emails sent in by listeners. Uh, if you need any life advice, if you have a dilemma, or even if you have a funny story you think I would enjoy, I particularly, li I particularly like uh, revenge and vandalism stories. I haven't had a revenge story for a long time. If you've ever gotten revenge on someone, please do send it in. I'd love to read it. It's Especially if you went too far and you regret it. Those are my fave. I've got an update to the cuck story that I'm not going to read. I'm saving that for episode 150 of the podcast. Which, by the way, is on sale and there's less than 50 seats left. So, lewespears.com slash live if you want to come to that. It is February 16. Eight days away. I'm recording this on Friday. So, uh, yeah, shit. That, what is that? If, you, if you're listening to this on Sunday. Oh, shit. What is this? So it comes down on the 10th. Oh, fuck. This Saturday. Saturday night. There's less than 50 seats left. Fucking come. It's going to sell out. And it's going to be It's going to be so good. I've got some shit planned. You know I do. <clears throat> um, oh, I might as well announce the uh, special guest as well, if, I'm, if it's next week. The special guest for episode 150 of the podcast is going to be myself. Not very special. Uh, Luke Kidgel is going to be there and Ashley Fizame as well, who's a brilliant com comedian from America. You may remember him, remember him from episode 50 uh, of the live podcast. I'm getting him back and there may be, no promises, there may be some other uh, people as well that uh, will, be, will be popping up here and there. Um, but it's definitely Luke and uh, Ashley for the whole thing and there may be a few special guests as well. And all three of us 
uh, we'll be doing stand-up sets before the thing starts and that won't be recorded. So that'll be the only place to see it. I'm going to be previewing uh, pretty much 10 to 15 minutes of the material that I have so far that's finished and ready for you guys to see. And uh, it's fucking so good. I'm so happy with how it's coming together. Like, it's only the start of February, and I reckon I have 15 to 20 minutes of, of, like, finished stuff, and normally I only have 20 minutes by, like, halfway through the year, so I think this next year's show is going to be real good, and if you want to see a little preview, it'll be, uh, I'll be doing some shit, um, at the start of the podcast. <clears throat> All right. Uh, firstly, we have here, hey, uh, Lewis. You ignored my last email, which I understand, but I wanted to tell you that I have voted for you eight times with seven new accounts on the podcast awards. So if you win by seven votes uh, in a future podcast, remember it was me. Hey, legend. Thank you very much, Oscar. Really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Speaking of the podcast awards, guys, a uh, surprise contender. We have until the 14th. So this is our last fucking week. A surprise contender came out of nowhere and is sitting at 1,500 votes. I am at 1,300 something. Okay? So it is still possible for us to win this thing if you guys vote. I know there is like 4,000 people listening to this thing. Go and fucking vote. If you've already voted, go on there again, put your email in, and in the middle of it, if you have a Gmail account, just put a full stop anywhere in your email, your username, and, and vote that way, and you'll still get the email, the vote will still count, and you don't have to create any new accounts. So go and do that if you have a Gmail. I know it's definitely illegal, but th- th- at this point, the only way we're going to win this thing is with a little bit of cheating. And what's the most disrespectful way to win a competition? By cheating! <laughs> so uh, go and do that. Submit your votes. Uh, it's, it's very possible for us to win. Voting closes on the 14th of Feb, which is... What day is that? The 14th is a Thursday. So this Thursday it closes. Go and fucking vote. I am so close to winning. I have almost 1,400 votes looking at this now. I'm going to plug it in a video as well. And hopefully um, we'll smash past this thing and and win. Because it's it's entirely possible, but it's very close. So I do need everyone's fucking support on this thing. Um, I also noticed that if I do win, I think I, I get a new microphone. So all the people that were complaining about the sound, the problem with the sound from last episode, um, I only have this one microphone. So if I want a guest on the podcast, I have to switch to the mic on top of the camera, which is just not very good. And you can hear all the background noise and all that kind of shit. So that's why when Jazz came on the podcast, the sound changed because otherwise you would only hear one voice. I really want a new microphone, but these things cost fucking $600 and the arms are like an extra 150 So I just can't afford it at the moment. So if you want to help me out, vote in the podcast awards or... Um, or support me on Patreon. How many votes am I behind? 1,400. I'm 150 votes behind the first one. So guys, I need some help. We're competing against some podcasts that are clearly way bigger than us. But uh, fuck them. They're definitely not as loyal or as excited as you guys. So let's fucking win this thing, huh? All right. Miscellaneous bit at the end. Where are we? <clears throat> All right, girls being too naive. Hey, Lewis, uh, my name is James from Jakarta. Where the fuck is Jakarta? Is that like Africa? Jakarta, Indonesia. Oh, cool. Shout out, James from Jakarta. I've been getting close with a girl named Lucy, and we've been really happy and having fun. It's been about two weeks, and we've been talking to each other about cutesy stuff like her smile and how we feel when we're around each other. All that shit. Last night, we were talking about best friends and how we need them in our lives. You should know that we're 17 next year, and so we may part ways at some point. Uh, I like your realistic out, out, outlook on things, man. <clears throat> I told her that I have a friend... I told her that I have a friend that whatever happens when shit hits the fan, we'll be there for each other. Uh, I asked if she had any friends she could rely on like that because it's really important to have people like those in your life. Um, Somehow, I ended up telling her, we might not know each other for the rest of our lives or even after high school, but I cherish the time and smiles we share together. Um, (laughs) She loves it when I say stuff like that 
make it sound all poetic and shit. Um, I thought that was a nice way of saying, let's have fun with the time we have. But then she replies with, I'll try to never forget you. If I have amnesia, you'll help me remember. I was speechless. I don't, didn't know how to respond. My stupid mouth said, you're so hard to forget, Lucy. What is this, a fucking rom-com? You guys just sitting here going, I'll never forget you. If I have dementia, you'll remind me that yet yeah, you're still there. And even even if I'm putting my, my shoes in the freezer because I have dementia and I don't know what I'm doing anymore, you'll say, hey, my name is James. Also, stop putting your shoes in the freezer. That's not where they go. And then you go, uh, uh, <laughs> who the fuck is James? I don't know what to do. I really care for her, but I know myself. I know these type of relationships were not meant to last. She's a sweet girl, but she's so naive. We've been dating for two weeks. I think this is her first time in a relationship. I really care for her, but I don't want to break her heart. I just don't know what her expectations are and where she thinks this is going. I think in her mind, what we have is super special and I do care for her, but I don't want to steer her the wrong way. She has romantic. She has this romantic idealism. How should I tell her that I don't want anything too serious? Should I play it cool and see where this goes? Anyway, hope this was a good one for the podcast and have a shit one, you massive cunt. Um, okay, well, if you... Yeah. Classic first relationship type stuff, man. Uh, if you don't want it to get too serious, I would say that maybe telling her that you're impossible to forget is uh, a bad move. Um, I would say, uh, if you if you don't want anything too serious, you have to be honest and say that, um, because otherwise you're just going to break this girl's heart because it sounds like she's planning uh, to live together until she's 102 and forgets her own fucking name and starts putting shoes in the freezer. So if you don't want to look after this chick when she doesn't have any teeth and can't remember her name... Maybe you should let her know that you're just looking for a route uh, instead of, uh, you know, long-term commitment and retirement home bills at the end of your 80-year relationship. So, yeah, you just got to be honest, man. You can't fuck around with this chick's feelings, especially because she's very young. So, I would just say, hey, um, just so you know, I'm just, I'm not looking for anything too serious. Whatever happens, happens. Um, But I'm not looking to tie myself down for the rest of my life. Be honest with her. Um, even if it hurts her feelings a little bit, say it in a nice way, but honesty is always, um, better than not. Um, behind the scenes at radio. Hey Lou, huge fan of your stuff and I love how much, uh, you've put out and how much you've grown, not only as a comedian, but also as a content creator. Thank you very much, man. Trying very, very hard. While I'm doing this, I've got bloody Keelan over there editing a music video and we just finished a sketch. That's sitting on my YouTube channel. That'll be up early for Patreon supporters. So we're fucking killing it at the moment. Also put out a video yesterday. Fucking sweet. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's uh, it's yeah. Shout out to all the Patreon supporters. That's why this is possible. Um, and really putting in effort this year to fucking do this internet thing properly for the first time in my life. Um, my question for the worst part of the podcast uh, is: What is the creative process behind the Luke and Lewis show? Uh, probably more specifically, how do you guys come up with various topics to talk about uh, and make interesting? What role do the producers play? Uh, and if you know, how does one get into the production of a radio show or behind the scenes work at it? I know you've briefly touched on this in previous podcasts, but I would love to learn more about it. Um, as someone who has always had an interest in radio and media and all the behind the scenes stuff, uh, I would ad- and would ideally like to do something in that area as a job in the future. It would be interesting to myself and others to hear about this. Um, yeah, man. Uh, so basically, the creative process behind the show is uh, we because ideally we want the radio show to be daily, right? Oh, and I have an announcement about the radio show while we're talking about it. Uh, can I say this yet? Yes, I can. So, Luke and Lewis, the radio show, for the next eight weeks is moving forward and we are going to be national, broadcast across the entire country, which is fucking so sick. So we're moving to 8 to 10 p.m. Sunday nights and no matter where you are in Australia, you will be able to hear our fucking shit memes, which is awesome. 
Uh, we're returning this Sunday. So tonight, if you listen to this on a Sunday, we're going to be live. The podcast is going to start uploading again because we're doing more shows. So will the video version. Uh, we've got Keelan coming in, so he'll have uh, he'll be filming the version for YouTube and also doing short clips and shit for Facebook and Instagram, which is so good. Very excited to get back into the Luke and Lewis grind and we're national across the whole fucking country. That's great. So, yeah. Lots of, lots of things. I need to make a fucking video talking about all of this shit, actually. I might do that for next week, just updating everybody on what I'm doing, because I'm doing so many things. Um, so, yeah, that's great. Uh, in regards to your question, the how we plan the show is because, obviously, we want, eventually, to get to a point where we're doing Luke and Lewis five days a week. So, we try to make the planning as efficient and organic as possible. So, what Luke and I will do is, it's basically down to us... Uh, making sure we pay attention during our lives when we're living them for little things. It's kind of similar to how I plan the podcast. I just have a note uh, on my phone that has Luke and Lewis show ideas. So we'll have every show uh, between 8 and 10 talk breaks that go between 2 to 5 minutes depending on how funny we are. We can kind of end them early or end them late depending on how we're going, right? So we want 8 topics. So that's generally four ideas a day that Luke and I have to come up with each. And sometimes Luke has more, sometimes I have more, but generally we always, well, we have to always have at least eight to ten. So I'll just keep a note running in my phone. So what do I have uh, at the moment? So I'll just have shit like, uh, here we go, radio memes. This is my thing. Um, Guy who got in the spa too early. I talked about that on the podcast. I'm going to do it on radio because it'll be funny telling Luke the story. Uh... Business is exposed, chemist warehouse, and then the reason why. Um, what is your, What else has your Uber driver done on the job? Because I was going home one day and the Uber driver filled up with petrol and I was like, oh, that's fucking weird. What else has your Uber driver done while you were taking it? Just, yeah, dumb little ideas of things that you notice throughout your life, uh, observations, phoner ideas, and all that kind of shit. And then what will happen is we'll come in uh, two hours before we go live. So if we're broadcasting at eight, uh, we get there at six and we sit down, me, Luke, uh, and the producers. Now, the producer's job is pretty much to make sure that we uh, plan efficiently, they make sure shit gets done. They produce things. That's what their job is. They make sure shit gets done. So if I have an idea where I'm like, oh, I think it would be funny for us to eat something spicy or whatever, we'll be like, oh, we need hot sauce and whatever. Producer's job to organize that. We don't think about it. Our job is to be creative, come up with the ideas. The producer's job is to make our job as easy as possible. Um, <clears throat> they also do things like they sit outside the uh, the studio while we broadcast the show. They'll write down things if I promise something on the fly or if I if Luke says, all right, we'll send this to you, Sarah, as a as a funny thing. They the producer writes that down, make sure it gets done. Or if Luke is like just issues a random challenge, they'll write that down and then after the show we'll be like, all right, do you actually want to follow through on this challenge or uh, Lewis, you said this funny thing. I think we could do that tomorrow. So they just basically... Because when Luke and I are in the moment doing the talk breaks, as soon as we say it, boom, it's gone. We forget it because we're thinking about the next thing. We're trying to be as funny as possible. We're making sure that the callers that are on the line are going to come through and, and all this kind of shit. We're thinking we're we, with radio because it's live. We're so, so in the moment that we don't remember what we say basically so the producer's job is to take a record of things we promise ideas ex- help us expand on ideas and and all that kind of shit um and then outside of us the producer also answers the phones when we say give us a call they it's funny like the we say give us a call 50 to 80 people call sometimes uh only three of those people are going to get on air so it's the producer's job to figure out the best callers who we will go the best with um, and put them on air and, and also prep them. Like if you're driving, pull over, make sure you don't swear, this, that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all that kind of shit. Um, and also the producer's job is to help us with current news um, because Luke and I generally don't like talking about current news, but it is a radio thing. We do it, as, honestly, we do it as little as possible because we, we don't, 
here's the thing. If we're talking about the news, it's because we fucking think it's funny, not because we... Because so often they used to they used to push us. You need to talk about news. You need to talk about news. And then we would be like, all right, we're going to talk about two news things a day. And then we would do them. And, and I would tell Luke a news story. And he'd be like, all right. <sighs> Can't think of anything funny because that sucked. And I'd be like, yeah, fair enough. Pretty boring. Hey, all right. It's Luke and Lewis. See you later. Um, so we don't do it too much anymore. But the producer's job is to always bring in like 10 current news things and be like what do you think of these and that's always good because sometimes we do find funny things in the news that we want to talk about so basically the producer's role is to make sure shit gets done um and make sure that we're still on air and and nothing breaks and no one says anything illegal or or if somebody swears accidentally they they make sure it gets dumped and it doesn't go to air um yeah, they, they basically make sure... The producers are so fucking important in radio because they, they make shit happen. Uh, and without them, the whole thing would collapse because it would just be a you know just me and Luke just screaming jokes in the planning meeting with no structure to it. They keep us controlled and direct our creative shit memory. So they're very important. Um, and uh, in terms of getting a job uh, with producing... Uh, I do, I'm not the best person to talk about with this. The You know what? I would say the best way to, to find out about how to get a job in producing is like track down producers of smaller radio shows. Don't fuck off the drive shows. Don't email Hamish and Andy's producer or Kyle and Jackie O's producer. They're too busy, right? To talk to you and help you out. Go and find like, a, like our show. Go and find a, a show that's on fucking Sunday mornings once a week at 11 a.m., Find out who their producer is by listening to it or Googling um, and fucking email them. Reach out to them and say, hey, how did you get into radio? But from what I understand, uh, a lot of pretty much ev all of the behind the scenes people came from uh, doing community radio and uh, getting connections from that and just harassing people to work for free to try out. Um, to sit in. A lot of the time, people will sit in on our show and just watch. Uh, to give you an idea, Ebony, who works on our show, um, she was on the sales team uh, doing, getting advertising for uh, television within the company, SCA, and uh, she really wants to get into producing. So she literally sat in for free on our show without getting paid every single week for almost a year and she only just got a paid position starting this Sunday being the assistant producer for our show so it's a hard industry to get into um, but it's I would say from what I've seen looking at all the behind the scenes people I've never seen a happier group of people that are more excited to turn up for their jobs uh because I've worked in call centers, I've worked in offices, I've worked in sales, I've worked in uh, laboring, I've worked in fitness and personal training, I've, and, and all of these industries, there's so many sad people that don't want to go to work. Uh, I would say 99% of the people that work at my radio station, I don't know if that's weird for the industry, but at least the place that I work, everyone wants to be there. Everyone's excited to go to work and excited to do a good job. It's fucking weird in a great way. So I would say that Radio seems to be a great job to get into because um, it's fun. Um, because that's, I don't know, that's basically what the job is. It's you're creating fun. That's your job. Um, so, yeah, I would say community radio, working for free and uh, trying to get as many connections as you can. That's how people get jobs in this in this thing. And I would say that's probably true of most industries. If you don't have a name and you don't have much experience, work for free, work for free as much as you can. Work for free until you can get a fucking paid position. I know it sucks. It's hard. Um, and also, but don't, make sure you're not getting exploited. You know what I mean? So work, work for free. But if, if you're working for free and you're bringing in a lot of money and shit, uh, you could be getting scammed. I don't know. It's a, it's a hard balance, but work for free. Uh, try and help out where you can. Learn as much as you can when you do that's also how Radio Mike started, you know? He, he was helping out for free on lots of different things, Hamish and Andy, and now he fucking works with them properly. He works on our show and all that kind of shit. Um, speaking of Radio Mike, unfortunately, he will not uh, be the panel operator for the show for the eight weeks, which is a bummer. He's uh, working on other things. 
Um, and it's just, it's, uh, okay, so I'll tell you what's happened. So we're going national for eight weeks because they've set up a, uh, a talent development thing. We're at the head of that program because they, they want to develop new talent. Uh, they also want to develop new talent behind the scenes, so producers and panel operators and shit. So Radio Mike's too experienced for that shit. So they've they've instead built a team, and this uh, new time slot that we're spearheading will be a rotating roster. So we're going to go there for eight weeks, and then hopefully we'll move on to something bigger and better. But for the eight weeks, the team's already sorted. Radio Mike's not coming with us, which is a bummer, but uh, that's the nature of radio. The show is Luke and Lewis. Um, and as much as we love Mike, it's out of our control. We don't control who the radio hires and chooses to put behind the thing. So we would love to have him. Uh, I'll still have him on the podcast every now and then. And hopefully when we move from this eight-week slot to something else, we'll, Mike will come with us. But it's the nature of the game. Uh, end of the day, the only thing that we can really control is that it's Luke and I, and we do a great show. So um, we all, we're also going to lose James, which is a bummer, who, who was our old producer. But we get to keep Ebony, which is great because she's awesome. So, I don't know. Uh, it's not going to affect the show. It's fucking Luke and Lewis uh, at the end of the day. And uh, uh, Mikey will come back at some point and I'm sure he'll feature in the show as well. I'm sure he'll do something stupid and we have to call him about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you very much for listening, guys. That's the end of the podcast. I hope that was interesting for you guys, a bit of behind the scenes of radio and, and how we do it and how to get into it. But my main thing would be talk to other producers and offer to help out for free where you can because they're always looking for, for people that they don't have to pay. <laughs> um, all right, that's the end of the episode. Uh, LouisSpears.com slash live to get tickets to this uh, the live podcast, which is happening this fucking weekend. Um If you want to be there, we're going to film it, record it, and all that kind of shit. So if you want to be there, it's fucking awesome. And you'll get to see exclusive stand-up sets from myself, Luke, and Ash Fieser May. It's actually criminal how cheap the tickets are for what you're getting. Uh, Also, uh, if you want early access to all my podcasts uh, and unreleased videos that... uh, either will not come out at all or won't come out for a little bit. Uh, Patreon, right now there, up there, there, there'll be this podcast, which came out on Friday. There's also uh, an unreleased sketch that won't come out for weeks. There's also an entire podcast that will never come out. And there's also that fucking horrible porn star clip that's up there only for Patreons. Uh, if you want to watch that, um, so that's cool. What else do I have to talk about? Vote for me in the podcast awards. The link is all over my social media. And, uh... That's about it, guys. Thank you very much for listening and watching and all that kind of shit. I will see you next Sunday uh, or earlier if you're a Patreon supporter. All right? So, hey, man. Hey. Hey, bro. Have a shit one, bro. Yeah, bro. Uh, 